Our breeding centre at Punta's Lita is home to just over 80 non-releasable macaws. They have come to us as ex-pets, confiscations or injured birds. Although they cannot have a life in the wild, they can still help their wild relatives by having chicks who can then be released. We've recently released 13 scarlet macaws. 12 of that group were raised in captivity. One was rescued from a fallen nest. She was only six weeks old. Thanks to the continuous and dedicated support we receive, we're able to prepare these birds for a life in the wild. Before they were released, we introduced them to fruits, nuts and seeds they'll be encountering in the wild, add these to their aviaries and let them learn through play. When we release our macaws, we opt for the soft release approach. This has been shown to give macaws the best opportunity to survive and thrive in the wild. When the flight hatch was opened, it took over an hour for the first intrepid macaw to make its first flight to freedom. When the first macaw made that flight, he was soon quickly followed by six or seven of his friends. But even then, some were hesitant to leave their home behind. But eventually when they were ready, later in the day, they plucked up the courage and flew free. Flying around and exploring their newfound freedom is a daunting process for these macaws. They haven't got very strong flight muscles, so they need to develop those over time. In that time, we need to make sure they have enough food and enough water. So we supply the supplementary feeding for them while they can build up that stamina and try and find that food themselves. Once they have that stamina and they're confident in their abilities, they will then start following the already released birds that have been out for a couple of years and follow those to the new food sources. Once they start doing that, we can then start reducing the amount of supplementary food we give them. As you can see here, they're certainly having fun exploring the immediate area and building up those flight muscles. Over time, we will reduce that amount of food down slowly so that they don't have a dependency on us. We'll eventually offer them 10% of their diet as supplementary feeding. What we've seen in previous releases is this then means that over a couple of years, they'll soon be almost completely independent. We still get some coming back and feeding every now and again, but most of them are off doing their own things. Because of the incredible support we receive, we can continue monitoring these incredible scarlet macaws, tracking their progress, ensuring their safety, and making sure they're thriving in their newfound freedom.